A famous actor was once the guest of honor at a social gathering, and he received many requests to recite famous pieces of literature. An old preacher was also at this same gathering, and he asked the actor to recite the 23rd Psalm. The actor agreed on the condition that the pastor also recite the psalm. And the actor began, and he, his recitation was beautifully intoned with dramatic emphasis, and he received lengthy applause. The preacher's voice was rough. It had been broken for many years of preaching, and his diction was anything but perfect. But when he finished, there wasn't a dry eye in the room. When someone asked the actor what the difference was, the actor replied, I know the song, but the preacher knows the shepherd. The 23rd Psalm is well known and well much loved. It was written by King David as a true and deep expression of his confidence and trust in God. Many of you have heard it read at funerals because it's at times like that that we turn to these beautiful God-inspired words to comfort us. The imagery is beautiful, green pastures and still waters. The shepherd provides all the necessities of life, food and water and spiritual restoration, and the right path, the right direction for the sheep's lives. And if that little sheep begins to wander, if she is nibbling her way along the grass and loses sight of the other sheep and of the shepherd, then God will come after her. I picture Jesus pulling this little sheep out of an impossibly deep pit with the crook end of his long shaft. But shepherds also carried rods. Rods were clubs with spikes in the end. In 1 Samuel 17, David claims that whenever a lion or a bear threatened his sheep, he went after it and struck it rescuing the lamb right out of the jaws of the animal. And if that wild animal turned on David, he would strike the animal with the rod to death if necessary to protect himself. The good shepherd will do everything, including lay down his life to save us from evil. The shepherd's presence transforms the even in the most dire of situations. The psalmist adds another layer of imagery. Our Lord becomes a gracious host who not only sustains life, but does so abundantly. My cup overflows, we pray. Goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life. The psalmist begins and ends with Yahweh, Lord the Lord, the name of God. And in between is a description of a life lived fully in the presence of the Lord. The central assertion is, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. But do we? Do we live in the Lord's house of love, or do we live in our own homes of fear? Are we trapped in a carnival house where the wacky mirrors distort our self-image? where we walk down dark corridors and mazes alone, where illusions twist our perceptions and the way through is unstable and unpredictable, fear can invade our lives. Anxiety about our homes, our jobs, our children, our retirement funds, our health, they can permeate pervasively, infecting every single decision that we make. We say that God's presence gives us hope and waylays fear, but how does that work? How do we stay in God's house? <coughs> Richard Foster, an author and theologian, talks about his relationship with God as his grateful center. One summer, his parents were caught without a permanent place to live, and 
So they rented a cabin in the woods, and Richard Foster just loved cabin living. At night, he would snuggle under a heavy quilt and watch the fire in the hearth. Night after night, I would fall asleep, he says, watching the strange yellow blaze that warmed us all. It was my grateful center. In the same way that that warm glow calmed and centered him when he was a boy, he says our relationship with Christ can calm and center us. And centered in God's love, we can move into that house, unpack, and settle in. The thing is, we have to work on that relationship with Christ. It doesn't just trust, doesn't just come the moment we say, I believe. It's built up over time. Being strong in faith does not come by just trying harder, trying harder, trying harder. It grows slowly over time as we spend time with God and with Jesus and with the Holy Spirit. John Wesley called the practices of being with God, the words and actions that channeled God's love, he called those the means of grace. He recommended public worship like this, the Lord's Supper, Bible study, fasting, prayer, and searching the scriptures as means of grace. Now while all of these practices help us know the shepherd by keeping the relationship between gods and humans vital, today I'm going to be focusing on one, searching the scriptures. Searching the scriptures means that we read and hear and meditate on the scriptures. It includes preaching. It includes daily devotionals like using the upper room or using devotionals on your iPhone like version. It, in, it includes engaging in private study and meditations and having general conversations about the scripture with others. Searching the scriptures is biblical. Last week we heard the story of Jesus' resurrection um, appearance to his followers in Jerusalem. And he led them through the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms and opened their minds to understand the scriptures so that they could see how that he could forgive their sins and change their lives. Further on in the Bible, we see Paul and Silas traveling through the Mediterranean in Acts 17, teaching about Christ. And they endorsed examining the scriptures to validate their message and bring people closer to God. In the second letter of Timothy, in verse 3, Paul says that all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for correction, for training people in the right way so that people who belong to God are proficient and equipped for good works. When we spend time hearing and reading and meditating on scriptures, we are learning to live our lives in harmony with something that's larger than ourselves, larger than the things that the world values. Cars and houses and job status and money come and go. They turn to dust in our fingers. The secret to life is it has to be lived from the inside out. Living in the presence and harmony of a living God is living your life from the inside out. Spiritual disciplines keep us in that healing presence and power of God. I'm going to go one more step along that same path of thought and suggest that one way to be immersed in scripture is to memorize passages like the 23rd Psalm. Memorizing slows us down and we hold each word and consider its meaning and then we link the words together and think what does that passage mean for my life and in this way we shape our world view and that strengthens our faith. When we memorize a passage, then we carry it with us, and we can call on it anytime and anywhere. This week I've been running around asking people, do you know the 23rd Psalm? What, what role does it play in your life? Louise revealed to me that she turns to this psalm for comfort when she's anxious. At night, when her mind is distressed, she can't sleep, and so she prays, the Lord is my shepherd. 
And that restorative image lulls her to sleep. During the day when she's worried over a loved one, when worry over a loved one builds, she prays, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And then she can lean into the power of God's presence to find that security for all whom she loves. In our misery, when we can't even link two of our own words together, the words of the Psalms are there for us, and we can fall right into God's goodness and mercy. Memorizing scripture, then we'll have the words ready to fight temptation. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want a new pair of shoes. I shall not want a new bike. I shall not want a new doll. I shall not want a new car. I will stay on budget. With every prescription, there's always disclaimers. Memorizing the scripture will not earn our way out of sin or into heaven. Our salvation is by God's grace alone. Searching the scriptures, however, will help let us learn more about God, help us spend more time with Jesus, and open our hearts to the motivation of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, some people confuse the means with the ends. They place the importance in doing the outward motion, the outward discipline, like memorizing or reading or med meditating, rather than on the renewed heart, one centered on God. John Wesley would warn us not to forget that the end of every command is a pure heart, loving God with all of our hearts and loving <coughs> our neighbors. Which brings us to the final reason to memorize scripture. When we do, we will have the strong, sweet words to comfort others. We'll have the courage to share the good news with others. I'm a breast cancer survivor, and in part of that journey, there were a lot of renovations. During one of these surgeries, I'd hoped to use image therapy to deal with the pain. So I'd gone into the operating room thinking about Georgian Bay, my personal place of still waters. Yet when I woke up, that pain was so immense that I could not even form the words to ask for medication. Off in the distance, I could hear the nurses talking about their summer vacation, and so I said, where are you going? Is it nice there? And the you know, nurse is probably startled. That the first thing I say is, like, where are you going on your summer vacation? And so she says, why? Why do you want to know? And I said, because I'm trying to find an image that I can hold on to to deal with this pain. She said, this is where the Holy Spirit comes in. She said, when I'm in trouble, I think of myself at the feet of, the, of Jesus, and I know that the Good Shepherd will look after me. We have not talked about faith. But suddenly, I could picture myself like a disciple sitting beside Jesus, listening to those passionate stories about God. I could feel the power of his healing presence, and I felt better. Of course, it might have had something to do with the medication and the IV that she also gave me. But <laughs> she was bold enough to share <coughs> her comforting words with me. The actor in that first story today knew the words of the 23rd Psalm and could recite them well. But the old preacher had spent a lifetime rooted and grounded in the love of God. He knew the Good Shepherd. So even though his voice was rough and the truth of his message could still come across, the Holy Spirit could work through him to renew the hearts of the listeners in that room that day. My prayer for you is that you find a means of grace that works for you so that you can abide in God and the Spirit can abide in you and the love of Christ will come through and you'll be able to renew hearts. I pray that you may live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. <laughs>